I will not give answers, you know, to a to a enabler of saying, okay, here's your five point plan. So you need to go do this and this and this. I will say we need to sit here together and figure out what is the plan that you need to take. What are three concrete steps that you need to take now to start setting this boundary with the addicted person? The number one element which comes into play is communication. There has to be honest and forthright communication. As we look at what we've learned, as we look at what that plan is, what our goal is, what are some of those things for you uh, as you put those things in your own, own words? You know, there's so many variables in this whole process. We change a little bit every day. Our, our days are different. Their days are different. Their experiences are different. While we hope and while we want to do everything we can to support them and, and get them back on the right track and everything else, we've got to reach a point where we can peacefully coexist with that fact, that it's like that, and be able to, to accept that that's the way it is and that there's only so much we can, we can control or influence or whatever you want to call it. And I think ultimately that's where, you know, I, think I, I think that's where I want to be. I don't know that it's ever a process that's, that's going to necessarily end, no matter what happens, because it's still going to be there in the past, no matter what. But if we at least peacefully coexist with it day by day, then we've accomplished something. Reality is our friend, mm -hmm. and that you <laughs> until you until you're willing to look at the reality and accept it, you you can't. You don't have a future. You can't move forward because you're st you're you're stuck mm -hmm. in denial, trying to pretend this isn't happening. And I think that's when when you turn your power over to the addicts. It's when uh, you you make yourself vulnerable to the next addict down the road because you you're you're just not willing to say, no, this is how I am wired, and I got to be careful of that. In the same way that. Um, somebody that has a genetic predisposition to chemical dependency, I, it, my, it's probably not genetic, it's probably behavioral, but, but I know that I, I get hooked pretty easily and I have to be part of a group where I process that day in and day out and, and get, I still get hooked, but get unhooked a lot faster than I used to. When I, when I think of goal, um, I don't, I don't know what will happen with my son. That's not for me to worry about. I, I hope he will arrest his uh, addiction. I hope he'll live life uh, a day at a time, sober, and have access to maybe whatever his uh, potential may be, at least in the process not hurt other people, uh, in the process maybe give uh, as much as he's gotten in his life. But probably the best description of my, um, my goal is to uh, get better uh, and accept the fact that I'll never be perfect. Uh, it's kind of like that person that continues to practice uh, hitting the ball, that, that baseball player. Uh, the more they practice, the more balls they hit, but I think they also realize they'll never hit it every time. And that's the way I kind of look at my life. If I can learn from this uh, and hit it a little more often uh, that I'm meeting the task, but the acceptance that I'll never be perfect because as soon as I believe that, then I may be believe that I can get back in that quicksand and if I just hold my breath and tread that monk and mire, I can fix, fix him. That's dangerous territory for me. So that would be my goal, uh, to um, a day at a time, practice what I know, uh, continue to learn, and you made that point real clear, Josie, you know, it's an ongoing process, and hopefully um, hit the ball, uh, some home runs a little more often, but realize I'll never be perfect. My goal is similar, to get as healthy as I can. Um, I think I've been through all the steps, like in death and just general problems and roadblocks that occur in life. Uh, first, there's the denial. This <laughs> isn't really happening. 
the anger. Why me? Why does it have to happen to me? And then the acceptance. You've learned it's a disease. Uh, you've learned to let it go. And then, you know, you need to work on the solution. So the solution for me is to get as healthy as I can, keep learning, keep getting the support, to be healthy not just for myself and uh, with my spouse, but for our other children. Because the healthier I have been slowly becoming, the more accepting they're becoming of the situation also. Mm -hmm. And the healthier we get, then we can enjoy those good little moments we have with our loved one. Uh, by doing that, and, and there are people that watch us, there are people that observe us that we don't even know about, but we can have that subtle effect on them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they hear us volunteering that fact that my son or my daughter or my spouse has an issue and, and we're not keeping the secret and that empowers them that, wow, you guys seem like good parents and you seem to be reasonable mm -hmm. people and if it's happening with you, maybe I don't have to be so hidden about this. I really agree with that. I think one of my major goals is, is to, to pay it forward because I'm where I am because others have helped me and that's true of lots of things in life. Mm -hmm. My goal is to sort of um, be able to have the perception unclouded from my habits from the past so that I can mm. try to, you know, uh, perceive in, in, a, in a way that I can some, in some way understand what's going on with the addict, with myself, and come to group, get the reinforcement so that my habits change and so that, um, you know, I have some growth, I have some change. But the biggest thing is getting to the point where I can, I don't, I can perceive things the way somebody like you who's done it for 30, 40 years, whatever it is, um, and with that, pay it forward because then you don't react from your own misconceptions, background, how you were brought up. And so, how do you turn that off? And I think you turn it off by having examples, listening to other people, and then gradually through practice, changing some of those habits, you know, those reflexes that we always do. I think part of it is repetition for somebody that, that works in the field and you've heard it. But the other thing I think, and, and this is something that you're all doing now and you've realized is we learn to dial out the clutter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you have a thousand different noises and things going off and you learn to dial down those things that are important, the things I can change, the things I can't, uh, then maybe to that person in the clutter seems amazing. How'd you do that? Yeah. Uh, when it's the process of doing what we all know we, we do, the thing we practice, the ability uh, to change the things I can and, and the strength to do that and the wisdom know the difference. That to me, is descriptive of getting rid of the clutter. But and there's a lot of clutter from our addicts. Man, we mm -hmm. get bombarded mm -hmm. with yep. sensory overload. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're in that quicksand and you're doing this and you're holding your breath and it seems never ending and, and all the this and that, it's hard to uh, not, uh, it's, it's hard to think clearly. It's hard right. to think in a healthy way. But when we get out of that, again, we're minimizing the background noise. We're minimizing the clutter. And so that's a way that people can, can look at it. I got a lot of clutter in my life. And, uh, you know, an experience like this allows us uh, a way to gain the tools to get rid of the clutter. I think that's a good point because I think for me, what keeps me going is to take life one day at a time and to begin to be grateful and appreciate, mm -hmm. what am I appreciative of today? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because I think if I remind myself of what's going on today and what I can appreciate, then it I can start to see my loved one's disease and not my loved one. You know, like mm -hmm. not he's not the disease. Yeah, and I think that's very important for me, for my health and for my balance. And it keeps me wanting to see the bigger picture of what possibly could be in our recovery together. I think that's important mm -hmm. that you keep that forefront when you wake up every day. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, you know, for getting me through this day. 
what can I appreciate about this day? Mm -hmm. And then go from there. And that way you're not looking at the big picture for the future, it's just today. And mm -hmm. be thankful for that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the same mm -hmm. thing when Josie said, um, look for the joys mm -hmm. and that is one of my big goals to look for the joys in life so often I was concentrating on the things I couldn't control mm -hmm. and it consumed me and dragged me down didn't help anybody didn't help my addicts didn't help myself my family and yes Family is big for me. That is where I would like to find my joy. But if that's not possible, there are joys all around us yes. and opening up our eyes and finding the gratitude. Gratitude, with gratitude, it's almost impossible to be angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I find the joy that way. I have finally come to the conclusion that Mark still does have life ahead of him. I'm starting to enjoy life more. My relationship with my husband is better, and um, I'm so grateful for that. And I will just continue with this group, and I, I feel like I grow every, every day.